blender tricks, workflow tips, and overall better and faster modeling process. If that's your aim, then this is the video for you. There's a couple of classic moves here, but also many unknown gems. So make sure to subscribe, like the video, because it sure helps in this YouTube algorithm. And let's roll. If you often import objects or shapes to Blender, you will notice once they are in mesh form, the lines or the topology of the mesh is kind of sucks. And that's understandable. Every software has its own operation, so Blender can only adjust. In this case, we have an easy solution called Cleanup Limited Dissolve. You can get that from the F3 search bar in edit mode, so hit that while every vertices is selected, and it should do you wonders. Did you know that in Blender, you can use the normal text's Unicode to import various logos, icons, emojis, and symbols, you name it. You just search online for Unicode shapes, and you will get the shape you need along with a code under it, copy it, and paste it in Blender Text's Unicode, and you are good to go with the shape to model things around, even with weird stuff, which is insane. If you want to inset multiple faces at once, as long as they are the same dimensions, it should work fine. However, if one of the faces is lacking in one axis, like this face is shorter on the Y, with inset, vertices on the smaller face will overlap sooner than others. In this case, for even inset, you just inset all faces a bit, then continue with scale on individual pivot. This can help a lot in the long run if you keep it in mind. If we have a round shape like this dome, and want to copy a shape or mesh around it, you just need to place the mesh at one side, then you can either set its origin to the cursor, which is the dome center in my case, or without playing with the mesh origin, just change the pivot from top to cursor. This way you can hit Shift D to copy, then R to rotate, and finish with Shift R to repeat the action up until you're done. In the matter of mass copying high poly shapes, the Shift D normal copy method can become a disaster since now your doubling vertices count, and Blender might give up on you. Thus, you need to use instance copy. With Alt-D, not only your grandma will be proud of you, but also the data on your file will not duplicate, so it keeps the same poly counts, and you can make as much copy as you want from this tree without affecting your workflow. Selecting inside Blender can be tricky when the view is packed with all kind of models and stuff. A quick way to relieve your stress is to hold Alt while selecting. This will give you a list of all the object around you mouse click, and you can choose the one you want. Because it's so frustrating when the damn light keep highlighting, or the camera is not selectable after 100 clicks. And since we talked a lot about the pivot point, you should get familiar with it. You will use it with either cursor pivot or individual. It's just essential if you want a quick process with various result in rotation or copying or any transforms you need. If you want to select this corner in a more precise way, you can just highlight the three faces on the corner, then use the Control Plus to grow selection. The minus will shrink it, of course. The same ones are located here in the Select menu if you forget the shortcuts, but don't. they quite useful. This works on the same mesh so objects with multiple mesh won't do you well. If you want to select every face but skip the next one in a pattern, the normal selection will take you some time, thus you need to know checker selection. You just highlight all faces in edit mode and choose checker deselect to get the job done. You can go further in the side menu to flip the selected faces or even get another pattern, which can be quite fun. Connecting faces can be tricky if they are curvy, and the bridge tool is there to get your job done. So, in the case where you need to close a shape like this, you need to select both ring edges and choose Edge Loop. You can, from the side menu, control the segments on it to smooth it out or even give it a shape profile. Inserting a shape on your mesh is done with the Knife Project tool. This one works from your view, 
So if I want to project this star on the cube, my view will be the main thing I choose, then I select them both in edit mode by holding shift and choose knife project. One of the essential work process in Blender is the extrude, inset, smooth. With this combination, you can get 70 to 80% of your modeling done, so get your fingers custom to the keys. E for extrude, I for inset, and a subdivision level that suits your work. Another method in modeling, specially related to organic stuff, is the cross-section with loft. This way we drew the outlines of any shape at many levels, tweak them around, then connect them with the loop tool's loft option. Drop on it a smooth modifier, and with the extrude and inset process, you can get some amazing results. Shape keys are also of incredible use if you know how to work with them, a method to shift your object from different shapes and manipulate the transformation with ease. A good old weight paints goes well with it, so the combination of keys with vertex groups is something you should know, might end up with a new way in making donuts. The pivot point is not the only thing to give randomness to your transformed object, and that's because we do have a random option in the transformation. With it, you can select as many objects as you want, then from the object menu, choose Randomize Transform, playing with the side menu after that to get the results you want on all operations available. How to Merge Shapes See if we have three objects, we can use Union Boolean on them, then remesh the entire things from scratch and smooth it with Corrective Smoother on high level. So you can get this weird thing. How cool is that? The art of getting different patterns on your mesh is done with tessellation, and that's inside the tissue add-on in Blender. You just roll with it by default or choose a profile you have to spread it all over the mesh. Topology patterns is something Blender still lacking on, but this one can fix it in times of need. The Control L menu for Link is a huge time saver. With it, we can link the object data, the materials between multiple objects or even copy modifiers. You just need to select your source at last and also make sure to differentiate between link and copy. Since after Link, both objects change together, unlike the copy one. Next menu you need to know is the Control P Set Parent menu and Alt P to clear it. This one is dope in organizing your scene objects or in animation. You can, for example, use it to parent chairs to one table or place a camera on your character face for first person perspective. The Shift-S menu for object and cursor transformation is quite handy, especially when you're lost. With it, you can send objects to cursor and vice versa. Many other options like Active, Grid, and Send to World Origin are quite handy, so get used to it. The Quick Favorite menu is there to cut the work time for you. Use the right mouse button to add anything to it. Then with Q key, open it in any mode. Keep in mind, each mode has its own quick menu, so set them up as you need. The hashtag frame driver is a quick way to do cycled animation. You can use it on any value in the viewport, or even with shaders, it's easily set and editable at any time to get your animation running. And that's all, people. Remember to like and subscribe to not miss on upcoming videos. Stay sharp. Goodbye.